Good morning, everyone. Pastor is in Tanzania, along with Ixaud and Bob Kilby and some other folks, and they're digging wells. I'm not exactly sure how that works. I don't know if they drill or if they actually dig, but that's where they are. So uh, it's a laity Sunday. Uh, we will be uh, taking you through the worship. First, thank you very much to Tammy for leading us with music and to Lisa for uh, leading us with our songs. There are some announcements in the bulletin. Next Sunday is a winter painting and fellowship event. Nancy Wolf is going to lead us in a winter theme painting and fellowship opportunity. So uh, that was a, a very, from what I've heard, that was a very uh, entertaining thing last time. And then on the 19th, that's the week later, is the restaurant meetup. Sign up for that. That's going to be in Cudahy, Costello's. And then on the 27th is the winter book read. I never thought of it that way, which is a different way to have conversations about topics that might be a little bit uh, tense. So that's, those are announcements in the bulletin, details in the bulletin. Uh, we'll begin our worship service with forgiveness and confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another. You. Remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. We are God's beloved. Amen. Please rise for the first hymn in the red book, O Christ the Healer, we have come. Oh, Christ, my 
Good morning. Good morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We will now sing the hymn of praise in With One Voice, Blue Book, page 29. The Lord be with you. Lord of healing and forgiveness, as Jesus healed those with pains, both internal and external, who showed us your glory, revealing your Son. Heal us, Lord, in the way you know we need. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. I and my coffee cup will start things off here. With we will read uh, Psalm 103 responsively. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfies you uh, with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles.
he made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far do we lose our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Uh, bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. The gospel accl acclamation is going to be out of the, the same blue book, page 31. Gospel reading will be from uh, Mark 1 and Mark 2. Uh, Jesus begins his ministry in the Gospel of Mark with healing people of many different kinds of ailments, physical, mental, and spiritual. Through his healing ministry, God reveals who Jesus is and why he has come. It's the beginning of the good news. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. But just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have, you do, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, throwing himself into convulsions and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. 
And they kept on asking of one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclaimed spirits and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. A leper came to him, begging him, and kneeling, he said to him, if you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do, chiefs, be made clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone. But go, show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the word so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly but stayed out in the country. And people came to him from every quarter. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a, a paralyzed man, carried by uh, four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? 
At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk? but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Jesus uh, went out again beside the lake. The whole crowd gathered around him, and he taught them. As he was walking along, he saw Levi, son of uh, Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were also sitting with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many who followed him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners, and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's nice to see you here on this cold, blustery day. What an amazing variety of healing stories we have in our gospel text today. Just for a quick check-in, I want you to hold up fingers for how many different types of healing you noticed in those stories. And you can look back at your bulletin if you have to double check. How many different types of healing does Mark present to us today? Hold up your fingers for how many? Seeing some four, five, four, four. All right. In Sunday school today, the kids found about 10 different kinds of healing. But we're going to simplify it a little bit. There was physical healing, spiritual and psychological and emotional healing. And there was also some healing of the community and social healing. What all of these healings have in common is that they are unexpected and miraculous each in their own way. We see a man with leprosy, a debilitating skin condition that had no treatment back then. It required isolation, and it led to ostracization from the community. This man would have been excluded from the home that he knew. 
He was someone no one would want to get close to for fear of getting sick. But Jesus doesn't, get, doesn't just get close to him. He reaches out and touches him. And as we know, touching people is often a very good way to spread illnesses. But Jesus goes beyond that and makes a connection with this man. He brings him physical healing. He heals his disease. But in doing so, he also restores the man's connection to his people. He's able to go back out into his community and be part of it again. Similarly, Jesus healed the man in the synagogue in a way that would allow him to fully participate in his community. And then Jesus heals a woman who is sick with a strong fever. Now, I don't know about you, but any time that I've had a high fever, even once the fever breaks, I need a few days to fully recover from that. I certainly wasn't spending hours cooking over my stove when I had COVID, right? But here, Simon's mother-in-law is healed so completely and so instantly that she immediately is able to get up and serve the group. And if she's anything like my mother, the hardest part about being sick isn't actually feeling sick is being unable to take care of your family and to do the things you're used to doing. So I can imagine that this kind of healing is an even greater gift to her than just not having a fever anymore. And perhaps the most amazing story of all, we have the paralyzed man whose friends are so devoted to him and who so deeply believe in Jesus even at this very beginning of his ministry, that they carry their friend through town, up onto a roof, dig a hole through that roof, large enough to lower their friend through, just to get to the strange teacher from Nazareth. Now, what strikes me most about this story is how Jesus healed the man who was paralyzed. Oftentimes, when we think of healing, we start with the physical. We focus on a type of healing that sees our bodies as needing to be the same in order to be whole. But that's not God's way. And it's often not with those with disabilities really seek for themselves either. Instead, often what is sought is a social healing, a healing of society to be more accepting and accommodating. And we see Jesus prioritize this kind of healing many times, including when he heals the paralyzed man spiritually first, and when he invites a tax collector an agent of the occupying forces of the Roman Empire, someone who would have been shunned by his community for collaborating with the enemy. Jesus focuses on bringing them into community and on healing the things that others don't see. Today, uh, the kids in Sunday school thought that Jesus probably forgave the man's sins first because he could tell that that was what the man really wanted and needed the most. Often, healing today is also about that community connection. Uh, People who use mobility devices often just wish that society was more accessible for buildings and infrastructure to accommodate them and laws to protect them, not necessarily for their mobility devices to go away. Members of the deaf community don't advocate for everyone to become hearing, but rather advocate for access to interpretation 
and accessible devices and open, loving communities. During our Tree of Healing VBS, we heard a story of a man who was helped by ELCA World Hunger Initiatives. This man was blind since he was a child. And his healing came in the form of services supported by ELCA World Hunger that allowed him to get a job and support his family in ways that he couldn't without that help. Now, physical healing, of course, is still very important. We need our medical help. We need our treatment for our illnesses. We are careful of our germs and spreading them to keep each other safe. And, but often, that's not the whole story. Uh, in a little while, Steve is going to share with us uh, a story of when he needed physical healing and medical help. But that physical healing was uh, added to by some community support and some healing in a different way. Jesus seems to understand all of this as he focuses on the spiritual and social healing over and over. Yes, he physically heals people, allowing them to engage in their lives again and taking away that pain and demonstrating his power. But there always seems to be another layer of hope and support. It can be hard for us to see and accept that kind of hope. But that's what this weekend is all about. Yesterday was the Feast of the Epiphany, which is what we also celebrate today. When we remember the manifestation of Jesus to the Magi, a sign that Jesus came for all in the world. This was a revelation, a new understanding, an epiphany. But Mark doesn't share that story. The Gospel of Mark begins with John the Baptist preparing the way and Jesus being baptized and starting his ministry. Our readings today aren't Jesus' infancy, though they are the first chapter of the gospel. This lack of an infancy narrative, the lack of the wise men, doesn't mean that Mark has no epiphanies. In fact, the first eight chapters of the gospel are dedicated to answering the question, who is Jesus? Mark presents stories to help the reader come to a new understanding, to have many, many little epiphanies about who Jesus really is. So as we think about that, and as we wonder who Jesus is and what that means for us, I would like you all to take a minute to quietly think to yourselves about these questions. Which story from our Gospels today do you most relate to? What does healing mean to you? Where do you see a need for healing or epiphanies in the world today? So again, take a moment to think about those quietly. I will watch the time so you don't have to worry. So think about which story you relate to, what healing means to you, and where do you see a need for healing or a new epiphany? 
And when you are ready, turn to someone close to you or find someone else in the pews. Or for those of you watching online, you can talk in the comments or to someone in your house or just journal to yourselves. And with your partner or partners, I want you to talk about your answers to those questions, which again are, which story did you most relate to? What does healing mean to you? And where do you see a need for healing or new epiphanies in the world around you? So you can move around as you like. We'll take a few minutes for you to discuss with each other.
You can keep talking to each other. I just want to let you know when you're done answering the questions, take a few minutes to pray for each other as well. And you can do that um, online in the comments too. Take a couple minutes uh, silently or out loud. Pray for what you each talked about. Pray for that healing and those epiphanies that you're looking for. Well, thank you all for that. I hope that you have some, had some good discussions and that in the coming weeks, uh, continue to include those things in your prayers and, and reflect on them. And now to uh, continue uh, thinking about those epiphanies and these different types of healings, we have a little uh, ritual for you. Um, there is a tradition for Epiphany called Star Words. Now, if you think about the wise men, they were guided by a star. Um, so a star word is a word that guides us, a word that you hold on to throughout the year and let it kind of guide your thoughts and your prayers and see where it takes you, see what your faith journey with that word includes. Uh, so we have uh, some stones here, and in a couple moments we'll have you come forward just like you would for communion, um, and Tammy will play a little music for you while you do that, and just pick a word. They're uh, words that are carved into stones, which are a reminder of that strength, that God is our rock. And um, the words are related to different types of healing or different needs you might have, different realizations and epiphanies you might be guided towards. I find that it is best to not think too hard when you pick a word. Just kind of pick the first thing that stands out to you and let that... Uh, be your guide. Uh, so for example, if you pick a stone that says joy, you might use that inspiration to make a little more time in your busy schedule to do things that bring you joy or to bring joy to others. It might lead you to pray for joy, to journal about Joy, it might remind you to keep an eye out for how God is working in your life, how God is making those little moments of joy possible for you, and hopefully make you more aware of when you are feeling joy. Uh, you can keep it in your purse, on your nightstand, in your kitchen, wherever you'll see that rock and um, have a couple moments for it to prompt those thoughts. There's no right or wrong way to use them. Uh, we will do a few little check-ins throughout the year on how your star words are going. Um, you might even take a picture of it on your phone or write it in your calendar as a reminder to think about that word occasionally. Um, and for those of you online, um, Yesterday, we put up a link to an online Star Word 
generator. So if you would like a star word, you can click that and it will give you your own star word uh, that you can follow just like we are with these. Um, so. Yeah, so stones are also um, something historically that has been used to hold memories and in many cultures in all sorts of different ways to mark the passage of time and milestones like we use for our River of Life milestones. Um, so we're hoping that this little stone with your star word also serves that purpose to help you remember those things that are related to that word and to mark this year as it guides you to your epiphanies, whatever they might be. Um, so you can come forward just like you would for communion and draw your star word for the year. And if you weren't able to come forward, but would still like a stone, I will have them out in the narthex um, after worship. And for those of you watching online, um, if you would like a stone and can come in to the church during office hours, you'll be able to pick one up as well. Now we will sing the hymn of the day, Healer of Our Every Ill, in the red hymnal number 612.
We confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Right. You may be seated, and we'll do our River of Life milestone. Anyone have a milestone you would like to come up for? Well, this is actually my mother's milestone. She made her finally, final journey home on uh, Tuesday night, and she is at peace, and she's out of pain. Do we have any other milestones? Uh, anything online? All right. And Sandy is going to lead our prayer. Please stand as you are able for the prayers. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Lord, we give you thanks. From last night, Larry was thankful for the lay team. Today, we give you thanks for Cindy's mother finally being at peace. Merciful God, Hear inspire wisdom and a spirit of proclamation in your church, God of forgiveness. Uplift leaders to share the truth of your word in community. Encourage us to live into the promise of baptism working for justice and peace in all the world. God of grace. Renew your creation, God of thunder and mighty waters. Restore the rivers in which your children are baptized. May fields flourish and grow. Summon us as stewards and caretakers of the land to cherish your good works. God of grace. Give strength to your leaders, God who is present in every country and community. Raise up leaders committed to equity and healing. Grant them discernment and compassion as they lead in love. God of grace. Protect and cherish the most vulnerable among us, God of strength. Accompany those separated from family or hurting from broken relationships. Shelter our unhoused neighbors and any experiencing poverty. Protect those incarcerated in prisons and detention centers. Care for the sick and the suffering, especially Joyce Warwick, James Miller, Ann Zander, Paul Savald, Teresa Torkelson, Shorty Zilka, Bruce Peacock, Greg Buck, 
Josh Hyatt, Barbara Henriksen, Laura Claffey, Dana, Sandy House, Juanita, Sarah Coors, Carrie, the family and friends of Darlene Kirchhoff, Cindy Fulicki and her family, and all those we name aloud and in our hearts or in the comments. God of grace. Encourage this congregation, God who calls and sends disciples. Guide us in accompanying, listening, and learning from and serving our neighbors on the margins, following the example of Jesus, God of grace. Trusting the assurance of the Holy Spirit, we remember all who have died and rest in God's care. Give hope to those who grieve even as we rest in your eternal promise of resurrection, God of grace. Receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment to wish others peace and you may enter comments online. Hi again, I'm going to do the mission moment, and our mission moment today is about our prayer shawls. David's going to collect the offering while I do the mission moment. Uh, these prayer shawls were made, this one was made by Shirley Jagler. This is my prayer shawl. It truly is my prayer shawl. And this one was made by Melody Jorgensen. So I'm going to share, share a little bit about my uh, personal experience with the prayer shawls. Uh, over a year ago, I had open heart surgery. And pastor brought my prayer shawl to my house, blessed me and my shawl with a prayer. And Sandy's going to read that for you. Dear Heavenly Father, you formed my being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. To my flesh and blood, you gave the breath of life. O loving God, renew me this day in your love. Grant me life as a gift of your faithfulness. Grant me hope to sustain me. May this prayer shawl be for me a sign of your healing presence. May it warm me when I am weary. May it surround me with comfort to ease my suffering. May it encircle me with caring when I am in pain. O oh, Jesus Christ, who healed the broken in body and spirit, be with me and all who suffer this day. Be with doctors, nurses, technicians, and everyone who cares for the sick. May your gentle yet strong healing touch reach out to heal all the broken and hurting people and places in our world. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for each new day. I wear this prayer shawl and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry, I gotta take a minute. <clears throat> even, <clears throat> even though I don't read that, that's a very powerful prayer for me. It's a very emotional time. Uh, I was really nervous about my surgery. And uh, this prayer shawl from our community meant a lot to me. So uh, I told my story last year. And I told you about how this prayer shawl was on my lap in my 
hospital room and on my bed and how my room was beige. I mean, the walls were beige, the sheets were beige, the TV remote was beige. And I had, I had this beautiful, wonderful shawl on my lap, this splash of color. And every time I looked at it, it cheered me up and it brought me comfort. And that's the mission of the prayer shawls. So Pastor has a number of these wonderful, beautiful prayer shawls. This one's made again by Shirley and this was made by Melody. And she would be happy to share those with you if you're going through a procedure or if you're facing a challenge. It's about comfort and bringing comfort to you and bringing healing to you. So as our, as our healing ritual uh, took us through. So if you would like a prayer shawl, talk to Pastor, send her an email, give her a call. There's a place to check on the yellow sheet. There's a box that says, I want a prayer shawl. Just let Pastor know and she'll bring that to you. At this point, we'll ask David to bring our offering forward and we'll receive that. And we will sing, let the vineyards be fruitful. It's a, it's a different version, so look in with one voice so you get the melody. Thank you. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table, that we receive what we seek, and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen. We, our closing hymn is There's a Wideness in God's Mercy, Red Book number 588. Please stand.
I would encourage you as you sing the hymns also to pay attention and notice if your star word appears in any of them. And now we go, sharing the story of Jesus Christ, so all may experience God's love. <laughs>